Hello, welcome back for this week's video. What is this? Another sweater so I don't have to wear a bra? on brand. Today I'm gonna be making stamps. I have all of this stamp making material that I've only used three times. And I figured I'd use for a fourth. And I'm kind of obsessed with stamps right now, so I figured I'd just make my own. The importance of planning is that it helps to eliminate anxiety, allows you to see the big picture, and can help to push you creatively. When you're able to plan things out, you're able to take the pressures off of your mind. Originally, that's what you have to rely on. You have to memorize events, work, projects, due dates. But when you plan, it takes all that pressure away from your brain, and now your planner is in charge of all those pressures. I use that same mindset for everything. <laughs> Illustrations, commissions, videos. I plan everything. Because I have allowed myself to plan these stamps, I have avoided pressure of getting it perfect when actually creating the stamps. When it comes to execution, I can turn my mind off and just follow the plan. This helps you creatively because it kind of establishes an ebb and flow. Out goes the tide of ideas and clutter, and in comes the tide of preparation and execution. I've found deep comfort in planning, but I know I must be prepared for inevitable mishaps and mistakes. Being flexible and able to problem solve when the plans need to change is just as important as the preparation itself. Making these stamps was actually more difficult than I expected. From my neck being at a 90 degree angle just to see what I was doing, to trying so hard to be accurate and not mess it up, my body was actually hurting and I had to take a bit of a break halfway through. It was also very time consuming, taking far longer than I expected. It took me about seven to eight hours to make these stamps from preparing, executing, and finishing the video. Oh my God, this video took so long to record. <laughs> but in the end, I'm glad I made them. Stamps are like reusable art. I wanted to make these stamps before October and the spooky season begins. I'm mostly excited to use these in my bullet journal. That's why I made them so small, but I'm also like kind of looking forward to using them in my sketchbooks. The last time I made stamps was actually for Inktober, so maybe I'll use stamps again in Inktober. I don't know. Kind of scared of Inktober now. That's probably why it's in October because it's terrifying. Even though making these stamps was so difficult, I enjoyed the challenge, bringing me outside my comfort zone, which consists of mainly drawing, but this was more tactile. I think that's why I like mixed media so much. Collaging, using different textures and different mediums allows my hands to not get bored because they're constantly trying to adapt to something new. The problem with that though is I feel like my hand skill isn't exactly caught up with what my brain wants. I know all will come with practice, but patience is hard. Let's be honest. Patience is a skill like anything else. This part where I'm cutting out all of the stamps is probably the most satisfying part of this entire video. Oh, look at that. It cuts so smoothly and it's not, and I'm not too worried about being super precise. So I'm just going at it, man. If I wasn't scared of wasting the material, I would just chop it up all day and all night, honey. Is that what Ted Bundy said? Am I not allowed, should I not be able to make that joke? As we're getting into the carving part, I wanna talk about some of the things I learned. First, I learned that I don't need to cut as deeply as I thought. You'll see while I'm cutting all of these that I'm trying to really like cut out the negative space and get rid of it. But at the end, when I'm actually using the stamps, I learned that you don't have to cut that deep for them to work effectively. Something I should have done was test the stamps as I was making them. I don't know if that would be a better strategy because it's going in and out of different stages. It's like carving, testing, carving, testing, as opposed to what I did was carve everything, test everything, and then fix what was wrong after I tested them. I don't know, someone let me know if you know anything else about carving stamps. <laughs> Something else I learned was maybe don't make them as small as I did. I made them fairly small. Like I said, I wanted them for my bullet journal and my sketchbook. So in my brain, I'm like, 
perfect. Make them small. It'll be hard, but I can do it. Just patience. But dang, was it so hard to get those small details? And sometimes the details don't even come through. Like the face of the snake wasn't too great. My stars stamp didn't turn out how I wanted it to. But on the flip side, the hand stamp, which has very small details in it, I love how that turned out. And I think that's because I didn't worry too much about how deeply I was cutting it. And the last thing I learned is that the X-Acto knife is my best friend. Oh my gosh, the way the knife cuts this material is like heaven on earth. You just cut away all the unnecessary things. Is this corner edge toxic to your life? Cut it out. Is your friend being negative and not adding anything positive to your life? Cut her out with an X-Acto knife. Why do my themes always get pretty murdery? Fall time is among us, folks. I am so excited for autumn. It is my favorite time of the year. Everything about it is just amazing. From amazing weather to beautiful trees. You also got capitalism becomes better because everything turns warm and fuzzy. You got Halloween, you got Thanksgiving, all the good holidays are during the fall time. The fashion, you don't have to be butt naked and still be uncomfortable. No, you can wear layers and be cute. Everything about the fall time is amazing. Is there anywhere in the world that's constantly fall where the temperature is is just constantly fall temperature because I want to live there. That's where I'm trying to be. I think I'm most excited for Halloween. I adore Halloween. It's been my favorite holiday for my entire life. I've become a bit obsessed with sprucing up my planner. You know, a little pretty memo here, a stamp here, maybe some washi tape over here. Sprucing up my planner just makes the process a little more enjoyable. So enjoyable that I've already kind of gotten tired of the stuff that I just bought. I realized that everything I got kind of fell into a certain kind of aesthetic. And now that the fall time is coming, I want something more edgy. Something, something more spooky. And I guess that's really why I started making these stamps because before I go off and buy a crap ton of stamps somewhere else, I figured I would go and try to make my own first. I messed up the first hand and on the fly I turned it into an eye. Ooh, rhyming. Yeah, I turned the hand into an eye because I didn't want to waste the material. And even though I had no intention in making it, I really enjoy how it turned out. At first I was annoyed by the accident, but without the accident, I wouldn't have thought to make the eye. It's moments like these that Bob Ross's happy accidents make the most sense. The first time I ever made stamps was in high school. While making these, I tried so hard to remember what I learned back then. All that came to me was, remember the design you draw will be mirrored on the paper and always cut away from your hand. Safety first. Which is something I really struggle with, to be honest. Safety really goes out the window when you're working on your, when you're working on your art. Okay guys, I wanna know, what is your favorite thing to draw? I need to know. My favorite thing to draw is flowers, so that's kind of my comfort zone. I always resort back to flowers in some way, and I'm just trying so hard to break out of that. I'm gonna try to get into more landscapes, animals, and people essentially everything but flowers. I really need to improve in those areas. Even though the carving process was so hard and took so much time, watching it back on video was so satisfying. Sorry for being a bit rambly. So I've been watching a lot of Handmaid's Tale lately. I started watching it a while back, but it's just such a heavy show that I had to take a break. But I started it back up and it just has reinforced my need to get a passport. I'm not going to spoil anything, but there was this refugee scene that just absolutely ripped my heart out. I was watching that and just gut-wrenchingly crying. Like, I literally felt intense pain in my heart. It was crazy. All I could think about was how people who were in terrible situations were seeking help from the U.S. but was not met with that with the same energy as Canada was in the scene. It just broke my heart. Could you imagine just having terrible, terrible situation and you've heard that you're able to claim asylum in a different country that will protect you from these terrible lives that you have. And then you get there and you're not met with anything that you were expecting. There were no open arms, there were just cages. 
So yeah, I really need to get my passport just in case things go wrong. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna move on from the subject because it's heavy and I don't want to linger on it more than I already have. Everything is political, I can't help it. It's on my mind all the time, I see it all the time. The future of everything relies on politics. It's stressful. <laughs> I wish I could remember all the times where I laughed so hard I felt like I was physically going to die. Like those times where you can't get your breath back and while you're laughing so intensely, <gasps> your brain is like, am I Cute. gonna die? And even though you're scared that you might pass out from not being able to breathe, you still can't stop laughing because it's just that funny. I feel like I need to start writing those times down because Ooh. I can't remember any of them which is sad dude i'm like so lit for this right now out of all of these stamps i feel like my favorites i'm gonna give you my top three all right number one is the mushrooms i love the mushrooms i love how they turned out i think they're very cute two would have to be the hand even though it looks kind of wonky i still like it it's it's cute it's got character and my third favorite is the dagger I like the small details of the dagger. Wait, just kidding. I take that all back. My favorite is the branch. My second favorite is the mushroom. And my third favorite is the hand. And then the honorable mention would be the dagger. I love how the branch turned out after I added all those tiny details. I feel like my energy has been a little off during this narration. I just took a quick break and now I'm coming back. So my energy is a little different, hopefully. <laughs> so I asked y'all on Instagram what animal you'd be if you were one. It's very important, I need to know. I think I would be a sun panda. That's what I've always thought. But I could be a cat, but I don't know. One of you said that you would be a leopard. Like, that's badass. My friend said that she would be a dog, but her favorite animals are actually turtles and frogs. You know what, I, I can respect that. I respect the fact that even though your favorite animals are turtles and frogs, you can still recognize that you as a person are a dog. I love that. Another follower said that they would be a bird of some sort. That is just so precious. The idea of being so free, amazing. And then someone else said that she would hands down be a cat. Um, yeah, you would. Sorry, I don't make the rules, but that couldn't be more you. I'm really struggling on where I should put my energy because I feel like I was putting all of my energy into drawing and practicing drawing, but I've been putting more energy recently into my YouTube videos because I like the YouTube space, but I miss when I was drawing before I posted every day onto Instagram and my development was so quick. Since I was practicing so often, you could see how much I was getting better so quickly. And I kind of miss that development. I miss being able to see myself improve in a very short time span. I am just all over the place in this narration. Please forgive me. I'm back on my bad vibes. I need to stop. I've been complaining a lot. So I'm gonna start talking about the things that I love about my life. I have an amazing relationship. I have amazing family that consists of my relationship and my cat, Arnie. <laughs> I have a loving family who I love dearly. I have great friends. I am grateful for all those things. <sighs> Please heal me, gratefulness. Please, I need the healing energy like so badly. I'm almost done with my planner. So that means I can either A, get a, one of those fancy planners like Archer and Olive or Loistrum or all those all those fancy schmancy ones that all the Bujo overlords tell us to buy. And you know what? <sighs> if they tell me to buy it, I might. I'm still struggling on whether or not I want a fancy Bujo or not because I still kind of like shit post all over my planner. Also, I think I'm gonna try to start making art with crayons. <laughs> There's just so many colors and uh, you can use them all willy-nilly and not feel sad about using them up. I love that. I love having supplies where I can be aggressive, annoying, and go balls to the walls with my too much jean because it doesn't matter. They're cheap. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I post a video every week. Thanks for watching. Bye.